Hey, want to find out what the new chat GPT code interpreter can do? Join me in this video to take the first look at this fantastic new plugin that I've been reading so much about. Test it. Let's test it out with some data that I have and see how, how it works and what it can do. My name is Juho Pesson and I'm professor of tourism business at the University of Eastern Finland and I've been playing around with the AI for, for quite a while now. And this new plugin from ChatGPT is something that I've been interested in for interested in for quite a long time. And I've seen people using it. I've seen that it has powerful capabilities, but this is the first time I'm using it myself. This is the first time I'm, I'm trying it out. Uh, I have some interesting data sets that I want to analyze to learn more about. They are connected to uh, different tourism research uh, questions and topics that I'm, I'm involved with. Um, I have analyzed that data myself several times using SPSS and Excel and other statistical methods and tools. So I'm really interested in finding out what this new plugin can do for us. So without further introductions, let's see what it can do and what it cannot do. It will be interesting to see how this functions. And I have to say, I have never used it. So this is a live demo. You are looking... <laughs> looking and examining the 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 uh plugin as uh, as as as, as first time users and uh this should demonstrate how imp easy it is to use what kind of results you can get and also probably work as an introduction video for many who have not yet started using uh, the plugin maybe you will uh, discover if it's usable for your purposes and what are its uh, pros and cons so uh, let's share the the um, uh, chat GPT window. So I have here GPT-4 activated with the code interpreter plugin online. So to activate it, you have to go to your settings and from uh, beta features, turn on the code interpreter. Then it will be available here in the in the activation window. I have prepared some data sets that I have from from uh, other from research projects that I have been involved with in. And let's see, there's some qualitative data, quantitative data. Uh, I'm, I'm quite interested what the, the software can do. Um, first we have here, let's start with this Matka Lukeskus data. It's, it's about uh, public accessibility of a tourism destination in Finland. And the whole data, it, it, it has just two columns in Excel. One is open uh, qualitative feedback data from, um, from respondents, and the other one is date. And I will be interested in knowing, first of all, can it understand Finnish? <laughs> How well it can understand Finnish? And can it analyze Finnish? Does it provide us with the same kind of results that uh, I have identified from the data myself? Uh, let's see how it functions. So now first we upload the data and uh, let's start with, with asking the AI uh, how it sees uh, the data and also about the language issues. Um, let's try it with that. So now quite fast. Yeah. So I, I there's very little information about what the data set is about, just the um, the the content, and uh, it 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 uh, quite well understands what it is all about. Uh, to better understand this, we could further analyze the number of feedbacks, their distribution over time, and perform text analysis on the feedback to identify common themes and sentiments. Fantastic. That is exactly what I like to do. Uh, let's test it out. Um, let's... Identify... Let's start with common themes. Mm 
So now it starts to work. Especially there's some some uh, problems with the <laughs> Finnish language, and absolutely, this is what it gets. So very typical. It includes this, um, let's say, filler words, and no, would be, by car. So there's nothing, no concrete results to be gained from this kind of um, analysis. Um, let's see. Uh, more advanced text analysis techniques such as topic modeling or sentiment analysis may be useful. Well, this would require a Finnish language model for accurate results. Maybe it doesn't have that capability, but let's try it out. Um, okay, let's see what the results are. Um, yeah, we could attempt to use latent derelict allocation on this data. It's important to note this limitation of the fact that the results might not be accurate or meaningful due to this reason, but let's try it out just for the fun of it. The data itself is not too large, so that it's it's pretty simple to identify the common topics and themes also manually. Yeah, the, the results are not that useful and not that accurate either. I don't think it works. Properly, what we should do is probably remove all of these filler words and just focus on the um, on the main things uh, in the data set. But I'm not sure if this is able to uh, uh, do it, especially because the Finnish language model is limited. It doesn't work, work that well. The, the translation is not that efficient. So uh, I think we are going to leave this here. It might work, especially with English text. We might come back that, to that later on with another data set. But this is how it, it functions now with the Finnish data set. So I'm not, I'm not that thrilled about it. Probably I cannot use this just properly yet. There, there could be a lot of prompting to do that would help to you know, develop the analysis. But this is just a brief introduction. And the idea is to see how powerful this is. So it would require some, some human input. Uh, to analyze these results um, for sure. Let's try it out with a, with a, with a new data set. Uh, let's activate the code interpreter again, and let's upload um, another survey. So this is a very basic survey uh, asking about how local people perceive tourism in, in, in North Karelia region. And uh, the, it's it's simple questionnaire with some like it scale variables. Very simple. Let's see how how the AI sees it. Okay, automatically does some basic analysis. Yeah, text analysis basic. Okay, automatically continuing it. We will look at the language, place, residence, gender, age. Yeah. Place of residence, Joen Suli, Peri Lieksa. Quite powerful to analyze that automatically. Most of them female uh, age group. Uh, let's let's try it out. Um, 
in academic research, we typically present these uh, uh, key columns above in in a table. Let's see if this can this can do it. Um, um, Brilliant. This is really nice. Making these kind of tables typically can take quite a bit of time uh, from researchers' perspective. So it's nice to have that data here. H is from the all of these are from the largest to the smallest category for example that makes the age categorization a little bit difficult to understand when the, it's not from the youngest to the oldest but i think that can be easily edited and asked and and prompted to to be changed great i, I like this uh quite a bit uh, then it also has the data set has uh, columns that contain response statements, questions of all of which are now missing entries. We use to analyze respondent residents' attitudes towards various aspects of tourism and its impact on their place of residence. Let's copy that immediately. Um, and let's prompt that. We will look at this following statement. Yeah, great. Agree, disagreed, or had a neutral stance. Interesting to see how it will present the data. Now we see it is analyzing a little bit more, but still relatively, relatively fast. Hmm. Interesting. It does the statement names listed to match the column names in the data. So this this would be something to double check. So this is one of the dangers of using ChatGPT is that you don't actually know now. Now it does something with the data, but you don't see it if it does the right things or the wrong things. So if it, for example, analyzes the wrong column or connects the wrong data to the wrong title, the, the whole of the results are, are, are completely erroneous. So uh, the the issue is that when you yourself work with the data, of course, you can make human mistakes and there's, there's plenty of them happening. But nonetheless, um, you know, and you can double check from the data that have you analyzed this correctly? Are you done, have you done this correctly? Now we just have to trust what the AI has found out. All right, here's the summary of responses for each statement related to the impact of tourism respondents' attitudes towards it. The local resident benefits from tourism in my place of residence. I benefit from tourism in one place. Okay. A most respondent to either. So, yeah. However, there's also a considerable number of respondents who are neutral, of course. So, basic descriptive analysis. Um, let's ask it if, if it can do... Um, Find our statistical mm -hmm. Okay, great. It gives us ideas. We could use it to check if the perception of benefits is associated with the place of residence, gender, age, or employment status of the respondents. Great. Okay, this is I, I like this quite a lot. So it produces the different kinds of um, um, analysis methods and connects those with research questions. It could be done in this way, 
or the other way around that you start with research questions, for example, here in experiments rank correlation, uh, explore the relationship between different attitude statements or here, um, if perceptions of benefits of tourism is associated with the place of residence, gender, age, or employment status of the respondent. So starting out with a, with a research question and then figuring out the right analysis method to do that would be great. Um, all right, let's choose something of this, not that. Um, Okay, there's um, now, for example, if these columns represent whether respondents experience from tourism in, okay. So now it doesn't have, I, I think we could give it the, the, the survey. Maybe it could understand the data set a little bit better if we give it the survey in a PDF format. I don't know, but let's see what it found, found out. Um, so about the, uh, yeah. It's not straightforward to analyze the impact of seasonal passive benefit directly from the data set. You know, whether the respondent experienced tourism in their place of residence during this season, but rather represents their agreement or disagreement with certain statements about each season. Yeah, so now the, the problem is that it doesn't know exactly what the data set is all about, so it cannot analyze it. Let's try something else here, what it suggests. Um, Let's see if the attitudes let's write like this. Yeah. So there's there's some some locations with very few respondents. So uh, it focuses on places with more than twenty respondents. Exactly how how uh, researchers should do. All right. Interesting. So chi square chi square tests of independence. Um, There is a significant association between the place of residence and response to this statement. Um, so let's ask um, benefits from tourism the most. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it, it analyzes. So the data set itself has um, uh, just this fully disagree, somewhat disagree text answers in the data set. So it recodes them automatically. Okay. So the differences are actually uh, individually respondents from perspective quite different. But again, the, the, the issue is how the survey was distributed and also what are its um, uh, 
cell sizes so how many uh, people belong to each group so have to be it's it's probably not that bad in the in the reality but it seems that that um Heina Vesi has strong support for for tourism um yeah and then it does gender age and employment situation analysis as well who benefits and 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 how again there's no statistical testing here Maybe it could be prompted, but I'm not that inclined to do anything more with this data set. Of course, all of these could be put into tables. Um, So this is something I'm 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 quite happy to see that it's it enable makes it possible to to generate these tables which are then hopefully easy to copy to Excel and, and Word and other other places. But I have to say that I'm I'm a bit scared to trust these results because I haven't done and analyzed them myself. I have to trust the AI that it knows what it is doing. How do I know that I don't have any any proof of that? So I would probably need to redo the analysis myself, but maybe this would be an easy way to get the the, the data into the word, for example. Um let's see one one last thing if 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 this is for, for academic writing. Okay, so it doesn't add any statistical testing information. It, it hasn't done any statistical testing. We don't have any p-values or anything like that here. So it doesn't do that uh, properly. It didn't test the, the differences statistically. Uh, so I think that's a limitation here. Could be probably prompted if I would want to continue, but I still have one data set to go. And I'm not sure if I have enough queries to ask before I run out. So let's do um, a new chat again. And I want to find out if it can be, if it understands SPSS data. Um, Yeah, the, the data set itself is in Finnish, so it can be a challenge. Ah, oh, it seems that Puriad stat library, which is necessary to load SPSS file, is not available in this environment. Interesting. Uh, So uh, it's it has a limitation not be able to analyze SPSS data. So I would have to save that data set as an Excel file in order to bring it here. Uh, but I'm not going to uh, do that right now. You There would be much more to do in order to have all these coding schemes in place in that Excel file and all the, all the rest. Uh, maybe a CSV file would work as well. 
but uh, let's try another data set. So I have one more data set that I want to know uh, a little bit unfortunate that SPSS files cannot yet be used. I think this is something that they can still still develop, uh, but on the other hand, the use of SPSS is getting uh, uh, less common. I think software like Python and R are much more typical nowadays and for them, they don't need these SPSS files. So I, I understand this this quite well and and uh, no, not a big, big deal. One last big data set that I'm interested in is um, Prism statistics uh, from Finland for the past 25 years or so. It's quite complex data set, so I'm I'm quite interested in knowing if this can just start using it as as it is. Yeah, yeah. This this is exactly how how the data set is built. That it has years that has the destinations and and the uh, arrivals for each year from each origin country. Uh, so let me let me try to explain this to the chat interpreter and see if it helps at all. Uh, let me double check. Um, does it have just the arrivals data? No, it has overnight stays and uh, arrivals and duration of the stay. This days ago, there's number of overnight stays, number of arrivals, duration of the stay of visitors um, in let's see if that helps at all. Okay, so now it does a lot of automatic <laughs> analysis in data cleaning. And this, this is this is by far the, the that's the most dangerous phase when you don't get to see the data set and you don't get to see what it does with the data set. I would really love to download the edited data set and see how it, it how it looks like. Um Let's see what it, it comes up with. Mm -hmm. uh, And um, and uh, like that.
So this this is quite difficult data set to analyze and get any in insights manually. So already this approach seems to work, but let's see. Let's see what it brings up. So all the data is downloaded from, from Statistics Finland, so it's official data, but there's quite quite a lot of it. Okay, interesting. So it's such a big data set that um, it's the, the code interpreter is running out of memory. But it's interesting that it's it's still like continues to find out different approaches how it can start solving the problem instead of just stopping the operations. Really interesting. Fingers crossed. First few rows of the clean data. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, let's ask simple questions that I know know the answer for. What destinations have increased overnight? Days the most from. Very simple question. It should be should be quite Lapland focused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some some destinations that don't have data for 1995, especially. Um, yeah, it seems that the the code interpreter has a lot of issues with this data set because of its complexity. It just keeps continuing. I don't think it will be able to solve this issue. Yeah, it, I, I think it has messed up the original coding. It hasn't understand, understood the data frame clearly enough because there definitely is data for 2019. But I just want to figure out, let's, let's test it out. Um, See what it can bring. I probably need to edit the data set a little bit, create much more focused data set, remove a lot of columns to make it more simple for the for the analysis, or just do the analysis myself. <laughs> yeah. So uh, absolutely, it, it it cannot automatically analyze it. I I think that it it needs much more simpler data set, or for me to explain better what the the data set is all about. Um, so quite uh quite complex data set. I'm just thinking if a CSV file would help it. Um. Okay, now let's try one more data set with a CSV 
file that has um, the capacity and use of Finnish uh, accommodation companies uh, from different destinations from year to year. And let's see what it can do. So this should be a bit simpler. One of the interesting things is the Excel file has, <sighs> okay, some um, problems. Okay, great. Data loaded correctly. Um, yeah. Um, company. So the the issue is that the, the data is in Finnish. And he doesn't like that. Uh, of rooms uh, and other. If this helps at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, it does have some problems. It do, the the issue is that each column has the number of years the, the the year attached to it instead of so it has rooms in nineteen ninety five, uh, number of overnight price average daily rate in nineteen ninety five, etc. For all this um destinations so probably i need to to explain this a little bit better if it would help um Okay, let's see if it can um, extract the year information, reshape the data set into a more manageable form. So this is again, well, not that big a data set, but still quite extensive. Okay, now we 
we encountered the limit and uh, it takes some time uh, to um, continue with the data analysis. But I think this is great first try with the, with the code interpreter. I will be playing around more with this and try to get the data sets working. It will be interesting to figure out how the code interpreter works. Um, I've done some analysis now with qualitative data set, finished data, um, with, with SPSs, with Excel files. And uh, I feel like that I, I was maybe even expecting something more out of this. Uh, it seems that it's not automatic, the analysis. It does, it has some difficulties with large data sets, with complex data sets. Uh, with um, not very well described data sets, it would need the, the survey forms and where the data comes from, more explanation about, about how the data is structured in order to help it to recode it into a way that it can analyze it. Uh, but then on the other hand, I do feel like there's a lot of potential here, something that this will also be able to save time, but I cannot help that there is constantly this nagging feeling that I don't actually know what is happening with the data. What kind of response is it is deleting, how it is changing, how it is transforming data, how it is moving around columns and et cetera, what it is doing with the data set and how, what are all the individual steps. So this is quite important, especially for academic research that you record each step precisely that you know what has been done. I think the the information the, it, it provides here is not accurate enough, for example, for academic research. It might be for consultancy work quite uh, quite useful, but for academic research, I wouldn't be able to publish any of this. Uh, I think probably something I'm, I'm I'm going to try to do is ask it to provide more details about the the things that it is doing. For example, asking it to output its data or or the code that it's using to analyze the data. I think that would be uh, probably something that it can do. And that would help me as a researcher to see how it is using the data set, what it is doing, if it can provide me the, the, the code uh, that it is using in order to do the things that I'm asking it to do. If that is the case, then I think that will make it much more reliable, much more uh, trustworthy, and could do something to try out in the future. But this was my my first attempt attempt with this. Um, not certainly not the last one, but uh, for for many of the things that I was hoping to use this, for example, in big data analysis analysis, I think this this will require a lot of resources from the tools like Code Interpreter to really start looking into the big data. And I feel like the AI has the potential in the big data field to analyze and understand the data set and, and how it is used and what is significant in the data set when there's so much data that, that humans cannot do it manually. But that will require a lot of like mainframe time, calculation time from these AI software. So this is now alpha version, very first version of this code interpreter, it will be interesting to see how it develops from here. I have I have quite quite high expectations to this so that basically um, it, it makes data analysis available for basically anybody. And, and if we imagine this for business purposes that, that a company can just input their data from customer feedback, customer surveys, or uh, social media, wherever you want, and the, day, the the AI automatically analyzes and tells you what is important there. I think that's such a powerful tool for, for the future of business and something that companies should not uh, not miss, something that they, they need to invest right now and figure out how these tools can benefit their business. Hope you enjoyed this session. It was definitely a, a unique and strange first uh, attempt with this, but... Uh, uh, I would be really interested to hear what you would have done differently. Did I miss something? Uh, and and how you have yourself used this uh, code interpreter um, in 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 your data analysis? But let's it's a good start, and I'm I'm uh, still liking the software quite a bit. Let's see how it develops. Thanks for watching.